In this video, we're going to do a subgroup proof. So let f from g into h be a group homomorphism. So it's a function where g is the domain and h is the codomain. And by a group homomorphism, we mean a map that preserves the multiplication. So if I take f of the product xy, that should be equal to f of x times f of y. And this is true for all xy and g. So group homomorphisms are maps that preserve the multiplication. Here the multiplication is taking place in g, and over here it's taking place in h. And the claim is that the image of f, which is the set f of g equal to f of x, such that x is in g, so it's the set of all elements of the form f of x, where x is in g, is a subgroup of h. Is a subgroup. of h. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the proof of this statement uh, very carefully. So proof. So there are three criteria that we need to verify when we're trying to show that a set is a subgroup of another group. The first one is that the identity element is in the set. So I'll call it one. So note the following, that the identity element in H is equal to F applied to the identity element in G. And this is true because F is a group homomorphism. You can prove this. It's not a hard proof. But the key thing is that this is an F of G. And the reason that this is true, this inclusion is true, or this containment, or this is a member of this set because E sub G is in G, right? That's what it means to be an F of G. It has to be of the form F of X, where X is in G. So this here is taking the place of our X. You see, this is our X that's in G, and this is our F of X. So that satisfies uh, the first condition. The identity element is an element in the image of F. Two, we have to show that this set is closed under the group operation. That basically means when you take two elements in this set, the product of those elements must also be in the set. So I'll just say take any. And the notation I'm going to use, I'm going to use this notation here. Take any x prime, y prime in f of g. And now we have to show that the product x prime times y prime is in f of g. So the natural thing to do now is write down what this means. So this means... Well, it means that x prime is equal to f of x and y prime is equal to f of y for some x, y, and g, right? Because if you have elements in this set, all of the elements have the form f of x where x is in g. So x prime is equal to f of x, where x is some element in g. y prime is equal to f of y, where y is some element in g. Now we have to look at the product x prime y prime. So then x prime y prime, well, what is this? It's f of x times f of y. And well, what is that? Well, f is a group homomorphism. So we can write this as f of xy. And this element is an f of g because xy is in g. And that's because g is a group and it's closed under the group operation. And you have two elements in g, so therefore the product is in g. So now we have x prime y prime equal to f of some element in g, therefore 
this is an f of g. So this shows it's closed under the group operation. And so basically, the image is closed under the group operation because the group itself is closed under the group operation, right? Again, I'm saying it in words, but this implies this, and this is true because g is a group and it's closed under you know, the group operation. Three, we have to show now that the image of f is closed under inverses, so take any. I apologize for the shadows. This is a, I need a better light. Hopefully you can see okay. Take any x, it's dark, it's starting to rain outside. It was hailing a little earlier. So take any x in x prime in f of g. We have to show that the inverse is also in f of g. So as before, this means that x prime is equal to f of x for some x in g. And so now we have to look at x prime inverse. So then, x prime inverse, what is this? That's f of x inverse. Well, what's that? That's f of x inverse. This is true because f is the group homomorphism, so this requires proof. It's not a hard proof, but it's something that you, know, you can use if you already know it, and if you don't know it, you should try to prove it. And then this is going to be an f of g, and that's since x inverse is in g. And again, uh, basically this is going to be true because x is in g and g itself is a group, and so it's closed under inverses. So we have x and g, therefore the inverse is in g. So we have x prime inverse is of the form f of an element in g, and that's what all of the elements in f of g look like. That's why this is in this set. All right, so that shows it's closed under inverses, so we're done. So it's kind of an interesting proof, right? Uh, the, the first condition is true because G is a group and it contains the identity. The second condition is true because G is a group and it's closed under the group operation. And the third condition is true because G is a group and it's closed under inverses. So we used all of the properties of G itself to show that F of G is actually a subgroup of H, right, of H, because it's a subset of H, it's also a subgroup, so beautiful, right? So therefore, we have that F of G, and I'm gonna show you some new notation that you may have never seen. I'm gonna put a less than or equal to H. So this notation means, it means subgroup. Subgroup. All right, so that completes the proof. So hopefully, if you're watching this video, you learn some mathematics and hopefully some of it made sense. Yeah, kind of a, a fun little problem, just some abstract algebra, not hard, uh, but just kind of fun. I hope it's been helpful, good luck.